I have some tension masts for various knitting machines that are having serious issues, and Jack has agreed to spend today helping me. The Superba mast, Studio mast, and Passip mast all have problems severe enough they cannot be used. Plus, they're dingy. It looks like they're rusty, but I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning with some stainless steel, steel wool, and some of the cleaning wipes we like so much, and see if I can make improvements. That didn't turn out to be very hard, and it was very, very effective. A few minutes on each one, and they look shiny and new and altogether better. Now, on to replacing the broken knob on the studio mast and tension setup. Happily, we do have another mast from an old machine that is not in use that may donate parts. Jack is harvesting the necessary organs now. You got to be sure that you don't lose this little o-ring. Some of them have a flat washer, some have an o-ring, but it's important that this knob be able to turn when this screw is tight in there. All right, if you'll notice, this is two flat sides on that. This is what rides the post and what accepts the screw. But you don't see until you take it apart that this goes inside of that. And they just pop apart. Right, like this. Oops. Just like that. So this little piece is retaining this piece. And you see you've got little tiny ear tabs here. And look at the serrations inside of it. That's where you get to click, click, click as this turns under this. Not an O-ring, but a little tiny lock washer. All it does is create a little bit of drag. I don't know if the camera can see the offset between the two ends. No, oh, we saw it finally did. Okay, so this is a lock washer, and the other one had an O-ring. And the reason we think this is going to work is because of the similarity of these two pieces. They're not exactly the same, but they perform the same function. So we're thinking that the outer dial from that one will fit the inner dial from this one, because this is what's important is the distance between the screw head and this piece. If you'll notice, this looks to be the exact same setup. You have ear tab, ear tab, going top to bottom, ear tab, ear tab, top to bottom, spring loaded. So this looks like this can remain on its original head. And what we really need to swap is this barrel from this one because the barrel for this one is broken. So we're going to try it. While you're inside, look for and delete all the fuzz from inventory. Here's what we're looking at. See this slide way right here? Yeah. And there's one on the other side, and that's what's missing. Notice that it's very shallow on this end, and I'm talking about the distance from the slide to the base. And it gets very deep up here as it gets to a stop. All right, let's look at what that is. That slide is going to go down this way. So that slide is what this ear tab and this ear tab rides on. So when it's on its shallowest point, this sits here. But as it gets deeper, this has to go down. That's what creates more tension on this piece. Then so we're holding our yarn tighter now. Exactly. But it's when that little ear tab rides this slide up to the stop. 
and that's as far as it'll go. That's why you got one over here and one over here. And since this one only has one slide, the tension was always trying to be one sided and wouldn't work right. All right, here's the orientation is the ear tab goes behind the stop on one side and then it goes behind the stop on the other side. So basically you want to put these ear tabs in their lowest position along the slide, but the way you envision it is one goes behind a stop, the other one goes behind a stop. So I'm going to hold this so that that's what's going to happen when I put this on. Now, this is the centerpiece from this original mast and you two flat sides. We put it in, we position it until it snugs down. It looks crooked. It is crooked. It's easier to do without the camera watching over me. There you go. Now we're in position. And we're going to use the screw and lock washer from this mast. So everything is original except... The this, part your fingertips work. Right. The outer knob is what we changed because it has to have those two slide areas for it to work properly. All right. There we are. And here is very little tension. A lot of tension. Excellent. You can hear that just drops. Mm -hmm. But when intentions, see, it's snapping down. All right, here's what we're doing. The antenna for the bug head on this passive just slides into the carriage. The problem is it'll slide right on through, and while you're knitting, it'll pop right back out. So And it did. And it did. <laughs> and we had to go looking. So you want it to come down to the bottom there but you want it to stop. Now, there was a slide plate in here that held that in. And what we're gonna do is take our handy wooden clothespin end and see how it's tapered. So when it goes up in there, which it's too wide now, but I have a coping saw. When it got, well, no, it isn't. Ah, there it is. Now this is trapped. And all we got to do is take our little handy dandy marker. Boy, my eyes are better than I thought. That's my new eyes. And we're going to mark this right here. And I'll take it in the shop and cope that off with the coping saw. And then we'll have a way to wedge this together. Here it is, tightly wedged in. And it looks really secure. Jack has suggested that I dab a little Loctite there so that vibration never causes it to back out. Here comes the tricky one, because we don't have anything that even slightly resembles the yarn guide that goes on the Superba mast. So Jack has decided to try this crimp on electrical eyelet, then wow, secure you, it yeah, and really soften the edges with shrink wrap. There is a thinner, narrower piece Thread it on first over that little bend that existed in the end of the antenna, and then a thicker piece threaded on second. And now he's trying to work the thicker one up and around the bend so that it covers where the crimp on took place. The point is to help secure everything as well as protect the yarn from running past any edge left by an exposed wire. That, of course, would be problematic. Once it's made the trip around the bend, the thinner piece is getting worked in under the thicker piece so that we've got a doubled collar. Now a pencil torch is being used to shrink that wrap tightly around the wire. I am not showing you this in real time. I've sped it up to double time so you can see the action faster but it makes it look like Jack is shaking the torch all around, which he's not. He's moving it gently. One of the goals here was to do something that would work, but would be removable if I should ever find the absolutely correct part to put on the end of the mast 
or the wire from the mast. I didn't want to sacrifice the possibility of finding the correct replacement for all time. Once it was good and tight, upstairs we went to try it out, and it works wonderfully. You do have to, of course, thread the yarn straight through the eyelet. You cannot simply pop it in as you can with the original, but I think I can live with that. This works well.